Hi, I'm Dr. Jeffrey Dreeben, Assistant Professor at Tufts Medical Center in the Division of Rheumatology. Osteoarthritis is one of the leading causes of physical disability in the United States, and it's characterized by a multi-tissue failure of a joint and causes both pain as well as other symptoms like stiffness and chronic aching and cracking in the joint. Our study showed that sports overall were not associated with an increased risk of knee osteoarthritis, but when we looked at specific sports, we found that elite level soccer and non-elite level soccer elite level weightlifting and elite level wrestling as well as elite level long distance running were associated with an increased risk of knee osteoarthritis. But it's important to note that all of those sports are associated with an increased risk of knee injuries as well as high impact on the joint. It's difficult to tell what the mileage of the elite athlete was for the long distance runners. Most of these individuals were competing at a national level or for an Olympic team. So many of them were probably starting at an early age and putting in very high mileage and pushing themselves through some discomfort. I think the unique aspect of the four sports that were identified as being high risk was that they have a high risk of knee joint injury and or they have a lot of impact on the knee joint versus other sports that were not associated with an increased risk such as cycling or doubles tennis and things like that, which are easier on the joints and have a lower risk of joint injury. A recreational athlete that has a concern about developing knee osteoarthritis, one thing that they can do is select sports that are low risk for joint injury, that are non-contact, and that do not involve high impact loading, such as swimming and cycling. For the elite level athlete, or the individuals that are competing in high risk sports, what they can do is try and properly ameliorate the other risk factors for knee osteoarthritis, such as maintaining a healthy lifestyle, reducing their body weight and maintaining a healthy body weight throughout their life, as well as properly rehabilitate after an injury. I think it's somewhat of a Goldilocks phenomenon in which doing too little can be bad for your health. And in the case of the elite athlete, they are a unique group that are probably starting doing activity very early in life that are putting in very high volume of impact on their joint, experiencing high impact, and pushing themselves even when they might be experiencing discomfort. So ideally, there's probably a happy middle ground where the individual is a recreational or non-elite level where they are putting on moderate levels of loading on their joint and not exposing their joints to high risk of injury. It's unclear what uh, exercises or treatments may help the athletes reduce their risk of developing knee osteoarthritis. One thing that they might want to think about is maintaining a healthy lifestyle, so behavior modification. When they retire, it would be important for them to maintain a healthy lifestyle, good nutrition, maintaining a good body weight, and maintaining physical activity to maintain the strength and range of motion that they have. In this study, we didn't see obesity or any other variables, but that wasn't the focus of our study, and we didn't really um, have the ability to extract some of that data out of the studies that we were looking at. I think one of the important things to keep in mind is a lot of the previous research has focused on a male elite athlete, and very little research has focused on the non-elite athletes and females. So while 40% of our athletic population at the high school and college level is female, they're very poorly represented in the research. So it's important for us to continue along and look at the non-elite athlete as well as the female athlete and the interaction of injury and sports participation to get a better understanding of what's happening.